hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and it's time for upgrades! Upgrades, upgrades, upgrades! That's right, we're going to take the Sawbot and we're going to upgrade it. Uh, because I was pretty happy with the way this thing worked and then a couple of you guys in the comments uh, sent me videos where ant weight sized Sawbots were soaring through HDPE with apparent ease. Uh, which, yeah, makes me feel really bad about how well this thing was working. So. We need to do some upgrades, but there's one problem with that. Wait! With the old motor and the old saw blade, we're sitting at 151 grams, actually, which is weird because it was 150 just before. Maybe I put the wrong saw blades down. Anyway, we are right up close on that weight limit, uh, which means that if I want to put in a big brushless motor and a really big saw blade, uh, which is really quite sharp, uh, yeah, we are. We're very, very out of weight because I think this is what the problem is. I'm using a little 1306 motor here and it just can't put out the torque that is needed to actually do some cutting, nor are the saw blades that I've been using on it very sharp. So by upgrading to a much bigger brushless motor, this one is a 2814. So there's a, quite a jump between the 13 and the 28s. Uh, and also replacing it with the bigger saw blade. Now, I need the bigger saw blade to have some cutting area because you can see if I look at the back of this thing, we've got a decent amount of cut width. If I place this little saw blade on here, we get basically no cut space at all. Uh, if you have a look at this, and jam that on there, you get like a millimeter of cut space outside the motor frame. So you'll cut a little bit and then the motor will hit and then that will be the end of that particular equation. So we need to go for the big saw if we're going for the big motor. And also, I mean, this thing just looks mean. The problem is that all of this adds about an extra 20 grams. So I need to find 20 grams in this chassis. Now I think I can do it because the hollow section in the back here is actually way bigger than I normally run in a robot of this size, mostly because I had to flip the motors around to mount up all of the um, lifty hardware, the arm hardware. And also this front wall is thicker than I would normally run as well. So by clamping all of that down, changing this over to an ABS chassis rather than a PLA chassis, maybe making this mechanism a little bit better, I'm hoping that we can actually get the weight that we need to do that. And if we can't, then we're gonna sacrifice the wheels because at the moment, the wheels are my nice big thick style wheels, but these are quite weighty. I use these for robots I wanna be pushy, uh, but in this case, I think we can sacrifice a little bit of pushiness to get the awesome saw blade in. So yeah, if we have to, we'll sacrifice the wheels as well and we'll go down to a thinner wheel, which will give us actually quite a considerable saving in weight. So. Anyway, let's print up the new chassis, which would again just be a PLA test chassis. I want to make sure everything works in the PLA before I print it in the ABS and really save the weight on it. And parts. So, as mentioned, the chassis is a little bit shorter in the back section. Uh, not a whole lot else has changed other than, uh, yeah, this sec front section here has been thinned down. And now it doesn't have uh, two mounting points for the weapon. It's just got... The one. Also, you can see we're not running the M4 bolt anymore to run the weapon. We're actually going to be running this piece of 10 mil tube, aluminium tube, which this is awesome because it replaces an M4 bolt and uh, my scale can't really tell the difference between this and an M4 bolt in terms of weight. So they're both somewhere between one and two grams and I don't really know if I'm actually going up weight or down weight with this thing. The whole idea is that there's a hole in the top of this, and there's a corresponding hole up here. So you should be able to thread this in here and then have a bolt or a self-tapping plastic screw go down and uh, fit between those two parts, holding it all together. And then this holds our arm. Now, weirdly, uh, while I was cutting this, I've just kind of flayed the end of it a little bit. So our actual uh, weapon arm here can go on and can spin relatively well. It's not perfect. I probably should find a little bit of silicon grease or something to put in there, but it does a good enough job for the moment. Uh, but it can't actually go all the way off this end here. So my original plan was to put an extra 3D printed piece out here, or maybe even just a bolt through it uh, to stop it from going anywhere. But for the moment, it seems to work. So we're just gonna run with this as is. Uh, but yeah, so the whole weapon setup 
Uh, and I've put that on the wrong way around, <laughs> of course. So there we go, that should go that way around now. Perfect, and still okay in movement wise. And then with this go, we need to find that hole and line that up in here, which is harder to do with the weapon arm actually in place. But there we go, so that's the weapon setup. And I could actually cut that down a little bit more. I've left so much room out the edge here, uh, but yeah, that's our, that's our weapon setup. And yeah, if I cut that down a little bit more and flay the end properly, this is gonna be way lighter than the M4 bolt and so much stronger too. Uh, and also, we don't have anywhere near as much side to side wobble. If I hold that on the ground, you can see we get a little bit of side to side wobble, but it's not as much as we got in uh, this guy. You can see there's so much side to side play in that. So, I'm going to uh, get this all mounted up and uh, sort it out and then we can have a look at how all this stuff goes. Ta-da! <laughs> ah, look at that, it's come together quite nicely. Uh, we just have one rather large problem. If I stick this on the scale and grab the blade I wanna use, uh, we are at 168 grams. So we basically need to lose 20 grams. Now, I did mention at the start of the video that I was gonna use the thinner wheels, which is basically uh, using essentially one of these just split over two sides but if we put that down and that we're at 150 grams and then if we put the wheel on as well we're at 159 grams so i need to find nine grams of weight somehow now some weight i can find around the place um like if i really get desperate i could cut down my wiring and things but it's only going to save like halves of grams Changing the chassis over to ABS will help a lot. The chassis is actually quite heavy at the moment. Uh, even with really light infill, there's just a lot of space in it. Uh, so I could probably get rid of some of the front scoop section maybe, make it more of a conventional wedge and just get rid of some of the plastic out here. That might help a little bit. I'm not sure if it's gonna be nine grams though. Nine grams is a lot, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so there's a few bits and pieces, but we I don't want to do any of that until I know that this upgrade is actually going to work. That was very worth it. Uh, those quick little tests, this new saw blade is cutting into things a lot quicker than the old saw blade was, which is really, really good to see. Uh, and I was a little bit disappointed in the damage, but uh, the saw blade coming loose at the end made me realize that I hadn't actually tightened the nut down to hold the blade into the brushless motor. So, all of the cutting that we were getting was literally the uh, saw blade being held on by a 3D printed spacer that I'd made to uh, fit the brushless motor to the six mil hole in the saw blade. So uh, tightening down that nut and uh, running this again, let's see if we can do even more damage. <laughs>
Yes, we can. Nice. I mean, it's still not the like straight clean cut through something that I would like. It can still bog the motor down a little bit, which I'm not really sure what that is. Uh, I might try and buy some new saw blades as well before everything kicks off. But that is very, very promising. And the fact we can make nice, long, deep slices into a chassis is really, really exciting. So the next trick is to print everything again in ABS and try and make weight with this thing. So here are the new parts. They are printed in my nice fluoro green ABS. I also have uh, some thin wheels, found some old ones for now. I will actually update and replace these later, but for now they will give us a good weight estimate. And as you can see from this chassis, uh, I don't have a front end on this thing anymore because I realized when I was looking at my CAD software and my printing software that the front end adds another like 12, 16 grams, something like that. And I think I might be able to get away with using this stuff, which is two mil HDPE. So if I can cut this and bend this into the right shape, then uh, we might actually be able to, yeah, make a quite light front chassis for this thing uh, and still have all of the scoopy qualities that we want. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all this together. Cool. So there we have it, uh, it's now an ABS beast without any uh, front armor or anything. 140, yes! That's under what, ah, oh, that's great. 140? Yes! Perfect, all right, so now I need to get 10 grams of two mil thick HDPE and form up some form of a front plate here to, uh, yeah, give us some defense and give us some scooping ability. Yes, so there we go. The new front scoop and two mil HDPE is only 10 grams. It is exactly the weight that we needed to make everything fit. Uh, I do want to kind of just change the balance a little bit. I might cut some out of this front HDPE scoop. I might uh, change the wiring up a little bit, but I just, I, I want a little bit so I can put some form of top covering on this because that will be required to fight the thing. Uh, and also I'd like to put a tiny piece of wire out the back of the saw blade arm so that I can actually self write. But all of that together is probably gonna need like four or five grams. So I might have to, um, yeah, change up a few different bits and pieces around the place just to kind of sneak that four or five grams back out of some of the stuff that's already going on. And then, yeah, we should be good to go. Uh, it's, it's great. I love this new saw. It works so much better than the old one and the new motor too. So that is all really, really good. Now, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you very much. Uh, I will say too, I've got better internet now in my house. I've recently swapped over internet. Uh, so I'm actually thinking about doing a live stream of, re of the redesign of Annie Are You Okay? Probably in the next two or three days from when this video goes live, which is on the Saturday. So I'll probably do it either the Sunday or the Monday. I need to get that CAD done pretty quickly, uh, but I might, yeah, I wanna take you guys along for the ride. So watch out for that on the channel. I've 
activated streaming now, so I should be able to stream directly to you guys and we can hang out for a little while as I redo the CAD for Annie. Uh, so, that's going to be end the end of this video. Like I said, I'll probably do a little, a few modifications off camera, but for now, this guy is functionally complete. Uh, I also do need to actually attach the front panel better because at the moment it's just taped in place, uh, which is not great, <laughs> but it's holding for taking photos of it right now. Uh, it will get some micro screws in it because it's HDPE, you can't glue to HDPE. So screws are gonna be the way we, uh, we do that job. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.